Okay guys, it's time for a house update. We're doing this for several reasons. One, we haven't really talked about it in quite a long time and we get asked in comments in every single video, what's going on with the house? Uh, number two, we just want to keep you guys updated. I mean, a huge part of why we're able to do what we're going to do in our house is because of y'all's generosity and helping us rebuild the house that love built. The number three reason that we want to make this video is so that you know we didn't take the money and run. <laughs> a lot has happened and a lot hasn't happened also. We haven't started yeah. getting the house. Nothing substantial that's physical has happened. We haven't done any substantial physical work to the house, but we're doing a ton of prep. I've told a lot of people, and it's really true, that um, you know, folks expect us to start this project really fast, but if you're doing any major renovation like this, it's gonna be months and months of planning before you start, and we didn't really have the luxury of planning ahead of time, so we're planning after we realize, oh, we have to do this. I figured we would be about halfway done by now. <laughs> uh, but I have a much more realistic timeline now, and uh, I'm feeling a lot more patient, especially with the change of the weather. Um, winter was really hard. Also, we were kind of in shock there for a couple months. Like, we didn't even know what we wanted to do, how we wanted to fix it, how we wanted to move forward. So we had to actually decide those things first before we could even make a plan. We had to know what we wanted to do. So what have we done? We are still plugging away at getting blueprints for what the house is going to look like. We have have completed like what the interior design and the rooms as far as just the layout of the rooms is going to look like and what we want the house to be. And now we're working on the structural framing um, challenges of putting a loft upstairs and renovating a hundred year old house. And guys, this <laughs> house this year is, is 100, 100 years, years old. old. And I just think it's so interesting that this is the year that we're going to dig into this renovation on its 100th birthday. It would be even cooler if we got it done this year. Not just because it's 100 years old, <laughs> but because mama would like a house again. But no, it would be amazing. Wouldn't it be amazing? Like, to me, I just, and this is just me dreaming, but I envision finally quarantine being over, things getting back to normal, and large gatherings being able to happen, and our house is done. And we have like a big Christmas party. I sent the architect we're working with, who's been really awesome, um, a set of videos so he can see more details of the current framing in the crawl space and in the attic. And we are putting a loft in this house. It's probably the biggest technical challenge um, as far as framing and the, the structure of the framing of the house um, because we're trying to squeeze a loft in that has enough head height above and keep head height below without putting um, too beefy, basically without taking up too much room with the support that goes between those little stories. Really a critical part of the design, getting that loft in, fitting it in, it's gonna be really fun. Um, it's gonna be a great fun space, super useful, and add a bunch mm -hmm. um, of square footage to the house. Some people may not realize this, so I'm gonna say this. Our plan is our house is gonna be completely gutted. And then we will com we're completely changing the floor plan of the house. I think maybe it confused some people. They thought, oh, you just need to like clean the mold up and get back in your house. But this is a much bigger job. I mean, it's almost a total loss of our home and quite almost, I would say half of our things. You know, a friend of mine's house, um, it didn't burn down, but it caught on fire and there was smoke all in the house. And her house was considered basically a total loss. It was gonna have to go down to the studs or down, be gutted to be rebuilt. And most of their things they had to just throw in a dumpster. And that was the moment I was grieving for her and like reaching out and asking how to help. And that was actually the moment a few days into that experience for her that I realized that was the same exact thing that happened to us. And 
Yet, whenever I hear about somebody's house burning down, I don't question the severity of that. And yet, for the first few months that all this happened, I kept thinking like, this isn't happening. Like, this isn't that big of a deal. Like, this isn't extreme. And yet, I was finally like, wait a second. Like, you just lost your house. And you just lost, I would say half of, if not more, of your things. We literally had to throw them in a dumpster. And I really think that um, when that all hit me is when I finally, it was like right around Christmas, and that's whenever we left here for a little while and went to the roads. And I know we never explained why we were there. We were just there for a break to get out of the camper. Um, but honestly, it was a time where I just like grieved. I mean, I was actually really happy there, but I was able to grieve. I wasn't here staring at the house every day, totally stressed out that we hadn't begun the project. And then of course, we are so extremely blessed and fortunate because we were given the money to fix our home. And we take that very seriously. Um, we take it seriously. We feel the blessing in that. We, we see that we are very fortunate. And so insurance, people have asked a lot about why isn't your insurance covering it? And the answer is, after spending a lot of time trying to figure that out myself um, and talking to my insurance company is, <laughs> the answer is that in our area of the country, there are no insurance companies that cover for like a systemic mold problem in your home. They will cover for uh, like a, sudden water break that causes mold. And really they'll only cover up to $5,000 of that, um, of mold damage. So the, if it costs more than that to fix your, your kitchen or something, that's different, but they will only cover up to $5,000 of mold damage. <laughs> chicken, what are you doing in the These bar? are the best chickens. Um, so yeah, so that answers that question and we'll probably have to keep answering that question. That's one people ask a lot. Wanna give me a little peck on the cheek? One of the other big things we've done is just make contact with people who um, are gonna help us on the project, whether it's people we'll hire or people who have just offered to help. And there's been a lot of that actually. These are folks who actually know what they're doing in different areas. So that's what I am most thankful for as far as people offering help is there's a lot of people who really are experts tradesmen, really good at what they do and they work in this field and we know a ton of people in construction. We've also been able to line up some, some, some subcontractors, which has been really encouraging. I mean, as of right now, we're planning to do the work. We're not planning to get a contractor. Is that so correct? Yeah. And the reason is because it would cost too much for one with a contractor and we, I mean, who knows, we may end up going this route, but that's not our plan. And number two, there are no contractors available for at least a year. We're not gonna just pick someone out of the phone book that no one's heard of and not when we know too many people who, who know what they're doing and know who's good in the business, so. I wanna talk for a minute about how helpful this architect has been. His wife actually was one of our YouTube viewers and he's been just walking us through this process step by step. We've had multiple conversations with him on his, in his time off where he's helping us design the house. And I mean, here's the thing about doing a project like this, you can't do it without a plan. <laughs> you can't do it without a plan. And so we're actually doing something with him. I think we didn't even know. I mean, I had some inkling, but didn't know how complex no. it was gonna be. And she definitely didn't <laughs> no. <laughs> know like the level of details you have to plan. We have someone who's helping us, who's an expert at it. And he it's just been so helpful. He's just walked us through it, kind of held our hand. I guess that's what he does. He says on renovation jobs, especially we're taking a deep dive into the framing that's there and the, the structure that's there. And then what we actually want it to be and how everything's going to fit mm -hmm. and how we can actually make a home that has the features we need. And we're not talking about anything extravagant. We're talking no. about some of Brianna's top features are a mud room that we've never had. It's and always hats been like and gloves in the and corner in the kitchen, in a pile in the corner, <laughs> on a little makeshift shoe shelf. Other features that we wanted to have were a dishwasher. So we've got a place for a dishwasher in the new house. All, very exciting. A large dining room was really important to me. 
Yeah, because we have so much out here that we've produced and we have, we've always been people who had big parties. The kids were actually talking about this the other day. Mm -hmm. One of the kids said, it sometimes is boring, but actually we have a pretty awesome life. And she was thinking about all the parties and events we've had. We had 150 people out when we cooked a pig a year and a half ago. And a wedding, we had 150 people out. Yeah, and we love doing that stuff, kind of stuff. And now we're not gonna have a dining room table that can seat 150 people. That's what the barn's for. But maybe 15 people, yeah. and then overflow in the barn. While we finish planning and getting things lined up to do this project, we're taking advantage of this window we have Normally on the farm, it is, this is the busiest time of the year, or nearly the busiest time mm -hmm. anyway, as we're planting everything um, and getting our garden up and running. And so it's kind of neat, we actually have this window where I'm not putting in tons of hours into the house, mm -hmm. where what I'm hoping we're doing is getting things lined up so that when I start the work, a lot of the work um, on the farm is done. And or it's or it's to a point where I can mostly manage. My goal with, with a garden, for example, the garden is going to be Brianna's project this summer. But my goal, before that happens, is to get all the paths heavily mulched and covered so that they're weed free. I think you can manage most of it after that. Mm -hmm. I'm I know I'll be out there some. It probably is going to be stress relief for me to go out yes. in the garden in the evenings <laughs> with Brianna and talk things over. Mm -hmm. But um. That's my goal is to get the garden to a place where it's the rest of it's ready to plant mm -hmm. and it's gonna be as easy to manage as it has ever been and hopefully as productive. So a question we've gotten asked a lot is why are you doing all this farming whenever you know you're about to start this huge renovation? And um, well, it's originally, a it's a good question. <laughs> I, I would ask that same question of us. Um, honestly, we were gonna scale way back and then whenever the coronavirus hit and all of the things that have come with that, we felt like we really had to at least try. We really had to at least try to grow as much of our own food as we could this year. Another thing though is that we found some resources recently that have been able to really help us um, and that is a local butcher. So we can raise a lot more of our own meat knowing that we don't have to butcher it ourselves. Um, we're, we're pretty sure we're getting some pigs, just a couple feeder pigs. And for those of you who've never had them the, and who've never done the whole butchering process, the reason for that is that pig management day to day is very simple. It's an, an extremely small part of morning chores, like five minutes. Yeah, unless you're moving them daily, which I know some people do that. We will not be doing that. We'll be raising them in a little paddock at the old barn. <laughs> Pig butchering and everything that entails for amateurs like us is a multiple day process. And those in the coming months will be multiple days we don't have. Yes. And that's why we said we're not gonna have pigs. We're, um, we're not gonna take on any new projects. So we've relaxed a little bit in that because uh, we just there's new basically butchering resources locally available and another thing too is that um, We need to make a video about how much especially my health has changed since moving out of the house but I am a different woman um, I have so much Energy compared to what I had last year. I mean I struggled every day to even function this time last year I didn't even milk my goats last year, and I could have. I just, I milked them a few times. I just couldn't do it. I was so exhausted and lethargic and even confused. Like, I just had a really hard time. So we, we'll probably make a video. We, I've been meaning to make that video for months about how our health has been affected. I have energy. I have energy from the time I wake up pretty much till the time I go to sleep. It's, it's incredible, and it's a, it's a welcome change to the whole family and to the farm. And my kids are older, and so because of that, can I can- Can I tell you something? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> a petal, cherry petal shower. That was beautiful. <laughs> Woo! Um, yeah. You might kiss the bride. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we will bring you updates, and honestly, when we start the house, 
that's what our videos are going to be about largely probably it depends on how many videos I you, make. you make yeah but I've been making videos again I don't know if you guys noticed if you've been around a long time you would notice I stopped making videos for a long time yeah I felt terrible I was exhausted and sick every day and, and how many videos did you make in the past year and a half two or three yeah. and I've made that many this week mm -hmm. we will still have a lot of farm videos It'll probably be a mix, <laughs> mm -hmm. a nice mix. And I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be fun for you guys and fun for us to have some different content um, on our channel. I will never stop saying it. I'm gonna keep saying it. I cannot thank each and every one of you enough. I wish I knew each of you in person so I could make you homemade bread or bring you a meal or a dozen eggs from the farm or some homegrown pork chops. And um, I just appreciate each of you and your encouraging comments and your prayers and your finances that you just so generously donated to our family in our great time of need. And I know so many of you are rooting for us and cannot wait to see our house project begin. But honestly, it has begun. You're just, we're not filming the stuff. I mean, like it's hard to, f we don't really film our conversations with our architects. So um, it has begun and it's, it's going to be great, and it's, I'm sure there are going to be really hard days, and you guys will come along for all of that. So, no, as you... Not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll see the hard, you'll see the good, you'll see the failures, A you'll see the it. victories. Um, and I think that's something that's really great about our channel, and it's something that we strive to continue to include in our channel, is our real life. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. It was a great day on the homestead. Bye-bye.